Next, the wife of the slain Japanese hostage Kenji Goto has said she is devastated but proud of her husband, who was beheaded by the Islamic State group. Goto left for Syria in late October, just a few weeks after the birth of the couple's youngest daughter. Since the release of a video showing the execution of Kenji Goto, Japan's prime minister has ordered an increase in security, but he himself has come under criticism for his handling of the hostage-taking. Catherine Clifford explains. A silent protest, but no doubt of the sentiment behind it. Demonstrators gathered outside the prime minister's office to condemn Shinzo Abe's handling of the hostage situation so far and his new plans to muscle up security policies. We will strengthen our security and tightly coordinate our efforts with the international community. I believe this is the only way to counter terrorism. We shouldn't yield to the fear of terrorism after this incident. If we did, it would mean that we were playing entirely into the terrorists' hands. Kenji Goto was killed despite efforts to secure his release through a prisoner swap. Shinzo Abe had been on a six-day tour of the Middle East giving financial support for countries fighting terrorism. Goto's beheading and that of another Japanese hostage a week earlier have fueled criticism at home for Abe's increased involvement in international affairs. The behaviour of the extremist group is hateful, but Abe's speeches and behaviour during his visit to the Middle East actually provoked terrorists to some degree. The killings have sparked calls to allow Japan's military to be allowed to go on overseas rescue missions. Under the country's post-World War II pacifist constitution, this wouldn't be legal, but the government now plans to put moves to ease restrictions to parliament. Abe's speeches show that Japan might take part in war. If they really want to protect the safety of the Japanese overseas, they should properly maintain the constitution. Abe also vowed to boost Japan's humanitarian aid to the Middle East, however maintained his country couldn't take part in airstrikes on the Islamic State group or provide logistical support.